Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today's been kind of a crazy day. We started out with clouds and ended up with, what, eight, almost eight inches of snow. Heavy, wet snow. So <laughs> it's about 9.30 at night and I just got in. So you guys, you can see I'm kind of wind burnt, um, kind of grubby, and I'm kind of wet. But I wanted to get on here to kind of talk about uh, something Dodge did that kind of surprised us all today was that they released five photos of the upcoming Dodge Charger Daytona. Now, if you're not familiar with the new Dodge Charger, there is going to be an all-electric version. And one of the worst-kept secrets in Detroit is that there will also be a continuation of internal combustion engines in this new Charger. So from what we've been told, Dodge hasn't confirmed this yet, but it's, we've, it's pretty common knowledge for most people. There's going to be a Charger model, which is going to be internal combustion. And then there's going to be a Charger Daytona. And the Charger Daytona is going to be the all-electric model. There's not going to be any plug-ins. It's going to be internal combustion or all-electric. So today we're, going to, we're not going to talk about internal combustion. We're going to talk about the Dodge Charger Daytona because that's what these pictures are of. Um, first of all, these pictures weren't that great. And I'm not talking about the car, I'm just talking about the photos. They were taken with a cell phone, they're grainy. Um, I live across the river from, obviously I'm from Detroit, so I'm living not that far from Windsor. So they have the same weather as us. It's been overcast and cloudy the last two days. So I know these pictures were taken the last two days. I know they're from Windsor because if you look at the background, you'll see that there is a, a, blue, or a blue stripe on a building and if you know anything about the Windsor assembly plant, that's what that building has around it. And there's obviously Pacifica's in a holding lot there in one of the photos. So we know that it's at the, the Windsor assembly plant. That's where the charger, the new charger is going to be built. So that's where these photos came from. Um, other than that, these photos are, they, Dodge did not release any new information on, on anything. Uh, don't let people fool you. They're just kind of teasing you of what this production car will look like. Now, keep in mind, these photos are not of a top-of-the-line car. These are, this is not the top-tier car. That is the 800-volt Banshee system car that's coming out down the road. That We won't even see that car. Dodge has not released any information on it. We know it's coming. They've said it's coming. But it will be late 2024 before we see that car. This is the entry-level car. This is a 400-volt architecture. It's not going to charge as fast. It's going to be a lot cheaper than the, the Banshee. But it's going to put out some pretty impressive performance, at least from the power figures. Now, it is going to be electric, so with batteries and stuff, it's probably going to weigh a lot. It's kind of funny in a way because now we were just talking, I mean, a couple people were talking about how, you know, it's been over a year and Dodge hasn't said nothing. And the cars we knew they were building pilot models at Windsor. And then today they just post pictures, random pictures of the car. So I want to go over what this car is. And then I want to go over some of the photos on it. So first of all, this is the 400 volt architecture car it's not the banshee like i said it's 400 volts and what that means is there's going to be two models of this car two different trims so kind of like how you have an rt and then you have an, a scat pack model your entry level car is going to be a charger daytona 340 now you might think oh 340 that's an engine from chrysler's past it has nothing to do with that the 340 actually means 340 kilowatts so with electric cars, they measure everything in kilowatts. So if you convert kilowatts into horsepower, it's roughly about 456 horsepower. So the very base model Charger Daytona, all these cars are going to be, all the Charger Daytonas are going to be standard all-wheel drive. So it's going to be a dual motor car, and it's going to have 456 horsepower. The next trim up, which would be like the equivalent of what a scat pack is, is going to be the Charger Daytona 440. Now the 440 car is going to have 590 horsepower as a set standard uh, power level. 
Now, Dodge has already released, these are official numbers. Dodge released these during uh, the SEMA show back in 2022. And what's very interesting is you're going to be able to upgrade these cars. These cars have will have e-stage kits is what they call them, but it's basically what you when you order the car and it shows up at the dealership, you can tell them like, hey, I want a, a level one stage kit or a level two stage kit. And the dealers will reprogram the cars when they get there. And the cars, they won't put nothing in them. They're just going to change the programming on the car and it will open up more horsepower for the electric motors. So basically, you're going to pay into this. We don't know how much it's going to cost. You're going to pay for these upgrades. And so when you go get the car, it's going to be at a different power level. Um, and the cool thing about this is, is say, well, I don't have the money right now and I just want the car. Later down the road, if you want it, you just take it to a dealership, they flash it, and it's got more power. But here's where it gets really cool. So we do have the official numbers of what these E-Stage kits are going to have. So if you have a, a, a Charger three or a Charger Daytona 340, if you get the E-Stage 1 kit, it boosts it up to 370 kilowatts. So that's 495 horsepower. So if you think about it, a Scat Pack right now has 485 horsepower. So just by getting the E-Stage 1 on a base amount of car, it's going to have 10 more horsepower. Now, if you have the 440 and you get the E-Stage 1 kit, it boosted up to 470 kilowatts, and that equals 630 horsepower. So, not bad at all for that car. Um, if you go E-Stage 2, the 340 becomes the 400 kilowatt car. And that's 535 horsepower, according to my notes. And then the 440 car will become 500 kilowatts with the E-Stage 2 kit. And that's 670 horsepower for the mid-range car. So you're looking at almost Hellcat numbers, early Hellcat numbers, for the mid-range Charger Daytona. I mean, there's rumors going around that the Banshee's going to create 885 standard horsepower. So it's going to be pretty interesting to see how these cars do now again these cars are going to have batteries they're going to be heavy so it'll be very interesting once these cars hit the market on how fast they are um i can't say if they're going to be faster than a scat pack or not and i can't tell you the pricing because chrysler hasn't released the pricing on them so it'll be interesting to see if if uh fca us or chrysler group or Stellantis or whoever they want to call them now how much these cars are going to cost because we've already seen the current or last generation challenger scat packs go for well over seventy thousand dollars and that's internal combustion so it'll be very interesting to see how these cars are so i want to go through these photos real quick now these photos that we got today were very dark and i don't mean like it's been really overcast the last few days. Obviously, I live across the river from Windsor, so I've been dealing with the weather. And today's been terrible. So I can't tell you if these were shot today, this morning, or if they were shot like yesterday. I know they were shot in the last two days because it's been super overcast. But with it being a gray car and with it being dark, it was really hard to see some of the details. But luckily, we have Photoshop, and we brighten them up quite a bit, so we can actually see the details in these cars. So let's look at the front of this this car here. We know it's a either a 340 or a 440. My guess is it's a, th it's a 340 car. Um, you, the first thing you're going to notice is the hood design and the grille. The hood design, it's got that R-wing, which is a pass-through. Because it doesn't have an internal combustion engine, it only needs the lower part of the grill to help cool the battery packs and the electric motors. So you actually have the upper grills kind of like useless. So what they did was they created a wing. It's air that goes through the grill and comes up over the hood. So that's kind of cool. That's, that made it to production. And uh, another thing we can obviously see is that in the middle of the grill is the Fratzog logo. If you're not familiar with the Fratzog logo, Fratzog was a just neat design. It's kind of a unique name that was just came up, doesn't mean anything. 
it was it was Dodge's like logo for the uh, basically through the '60s and early '70s. They got rid of it just as the company was going through um, the bailouts and whatnot, and they ended up using the Pentastar to kind of reform the the Chrysler, all the Chrysler brands together. But the Frats, although is is back, and it's not for the whole brand. Any of the Dodge cars that carry the Fratsog logo, it means that they're all electric. It does not mean that they're plug-ins. It means they're all electric. If you look at the new Hornet, it still has what they call the Rombi logo, those two slashes that go to the side. And even on the RT, that's a plug-in that has the Rombi logo. So if you see one of these chargers and it's got a Rombi logo on it, it's going to mean that it's internal combustion. If it's got the Fratsog logo, it's going to mean that it's full electric. Easy way to tell the two cars apart if you're looking at the fronts. Um, we do n see some new lines in the grill. Like, so on the concept car was a solid light bar, an LED light bar that went around the grill. On here, we see some brakes. I don't, I can't tell if it's from the headlight assemblies or if it's part of the, the frunk. Because we know these cars are going to have a frunk. Um, a lot of people have asked me, hey, is it going to have a power frunk? I have no idea. I, I don't know that much into the design that well. Um, I don't know if, from the body lines, it looks like it might open up underneath. And then you're going to have to lean over that R-wing to kind of get into the frunk, which is kind of dumb. I, I don't know how they're going to get around that, but uh, it'll be interesting to see the car when, when it's done in person. Again, this is a pre-production pilot model. So, the another thing that we can tell in this photo is uh, the biggest thing is the headlights. The headlights are totally different on this one compared to the concept. The concept had these really cool projector LEDs, and they made the car look really wide. And I hope to God that they show up on the 800 volt car. These are just basic LED lights. They look very boring. Um, they get the job done, but it just looks boring. We do see that in front of the front wheel, there is uh, reflect the um, tur like well amber reflectors on the side of the car, just like the current chargers in uh, Chrysler 300 have. And that's obviously to meet uh, government requirements. And then if you look at the front bumper, we see that there's sensors in the front bumper finally, but we see where they're placed. They're placed upon that middle part all the way across. They're not really hidden down low or anything. But we do see that where the bottom part of the grill is kind of similar in shape to the concept. We do see the ADAS um, like in the radar and stuff down below. Uh, it does have, looks like it has kind of like a honeycomb texture grill below. But one thing that cracks me up is with all these electric cars, they keep adding like LED lights to all these things. This one doesn't have any fog lights. Like, I, I don't understand that. Like, I like having fog lights on my car. I like being able, the more light at night, the better. And I think it's stupid that if you're buying an electric car and they're going to put all these like fancy lights, oh, we're going to light up the Fratzog logo on the grill, put some fog lights in it. But that's just my opinion. But I'm going to save my opinions until I actually see the car in person if I like it or not. I, I like some of these photos. I'm, I'm very impressed with some of the designs. Like this next photo, we look here. It's the front of the car. Of course, we see the lights on and stuff like that. But I do love the side profile of this car. It looks super slick. I love the Coke bottle shape. It's more aggressive than the last car. Um, the front end's very square, which is kind of funny. The one thing I do like a lot are these new mirrors. Um, totally different shape. The concept had these really skinny, like, uh, you know, thin carbon fiber mirrors, which looked really good, but they weren't really usable. These, mo these mirrors are a lot bigger, but the cool thing about them is compared to like when I drive my Chrysler 300, the mirrors on that car suck. You, you can't really see it. They're so thin. These mirrors look huge compared to the ones that are on my car. And I kind of like that. So... It'll be interesting to see them in person, but I do like the kind of the three-quarter angle uh, look of the, the new Charger two-door. We also can see that it has, so door handles, it's got a touch pad door handle built into the door, so that's going to be different to get used to, like, design-wise, but 
still pretty slick. Now, moving to the back of the car. This is the most radically different part of the car compared to the concept that I've seen yet. So, we have that Coke bottle shape that sticks out big time on this car here. We do see that the back bumper is totally different than the concept. We do see a diffuser underneath there. And we also see that it added reflectors now to the rear bumper to meet crash test standards. Um, it's got kind of like the indentions on the rear bumper that kind of look like the front grille where the fog lights would be. And the light bar going across the back is totally different. Now on the concept, it was blacked out because they didn't really need to put amber turn signals in it. They, need to, they didn't need to put backup lights in it. It was just like a neon bar that went all the way around. This one is totally different. We do see where there's backup lights and amber turn signals. But the one thing that, first of all, this thing's got a cord hanging on the back of it, so the trunk's not sitting flush. So again, I can't judge the car completely because it's, you know, it's just like pictures taken of something just sitting there. But if you look at the back, the spoiler, I think that spoiler looks terrible in that car from this angle. I would love to see something like more of like a, kind of like the Challenger, like uh, the early Challenger lip, or maybe like the Barracuda spoiler. That'd be kind of cool, but that spoiler does not look good on it. It just, I don't know, it just doesn't look good. Um, it's kind of funny because we know that the new car is going to be a fastback, and I think they're trying too hard with that rear deck, trying to make it look like more like a sedan. So, I mean, the like I said, the original Charger was a fastback. I don't understand why they're trying too hard here, but it looks okay. I mean, it's not a it's not a terrible design. It's just it's going to take a while to get used to. We got we have a Charger and a Challenger stuck in our heads on how that should look, and this is not a super retro car. Um. One thing we can see right here, too, is that there is a similar style gas cap, or I should say charge port door, on this car. The interesting thing is, is because it's going to be internal combustion and all electric, I'm sure that they're going to share the same exact uh, like fuel slash charge port door. So I think it's going to be the same. It's going to save some money for them. I don't see a, a charge port being on the front fender or anything. I see it being right on the side. So it'll be interesting to see how it fits in with some charging stations because we've seen that like F-150s and stuff at a uh, Tesla charging and a supercharging station it barely can like fit in because or not even that it's just like anything side mounted it has a hard time of fitting in at the at those charging stations so we'll see because everything's kind of charged from the front in or the rear on most cars like the rivian and like anything tesla it's on the rear so it'll be interesting to see how this this uh charge port door works um the, there's one photo of somebody putting camouflage on the car and it really doesn't show anything it's just them putting camouflage on it i i didn't really get that photo but this last one i'm going to talk about this is probably my favorite angle of the car even though it's shot through a fence and it looks terrible if you look at the stance of this car it looks really good you do get to see the light coming through through the r wing on it um it it, it in person, the body lines look really good. I can't wait to see this thing in person. Like, see how gray out, grayed out the skies are. Even when we lit, like brightened it up, you can't really tell where the roof, like the roof, uh, uh, like starts and stops in this photo. So, they did a good job of hiding most of the design of the car. But I, I just I love the how that profile looks. It's gonna be a good looking car. I can tell. But I'm again. Being electric, it, the front headlights and stuff look different. I don't know if it's going to be as good looking as the concept, so I'm going to wait to see this car in person. But nonetheless, it's very interesting and, and, and very great that Dodge put these pictures out. Like, they needed to say something about anything that they're doing. Uh, with the, the Durango being at its last call models and everything, Dodge has really not said anything 
anything about this charger or anything about the future lineup. The Hornet has been doing awful in sales. Um, people are blowing up about it, saying how terrible of an owner experience they've had with this thing because of all the problems they've been having. So I think by doing this, it's kind of helping damage control with the brand. Um, I wouldn't say it's solving all their problems because I think a lot of people are going to hate this car just because it's electric. But uh, it, it's definitely helping the brand's image a little bit. Like, hey, we're, we're doing something new. This is, you got to think, we've had the same charger technically since 2011. And the same platform since 2006. Well, 2005, technically fall of 2004, if you want to get really technical with the 300 and Magnum. But it's something completely new. And I don't think Dodge people are used to that. Like the Durango's been around since 2011. The Hornet's new and it's not really built in North America. So it's just a rebadged, re-engineered uh, Alfa Romeo. But this is something unique to Dodge. And I think it's going to be very exciting. So I'm going to wait to say what I think about the actual design until I see the car in person. Overall, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that Dodge did this. I think the pictures are kind of crap <laughs> because they're so poor quality but that's what the whole purpose of it was it was to kind of build up the excitement so it's kind of cool i can't wait to see these things especially in detroit running around on the roads and take some pictures of them so it's gonna be really cool but uh i'm curious to know what you guys think about this thing i mean i've been writing about this car for almost a year uh a year and a half now so i want to know what everybody thinks of this car i mean Obviously, it's not the Banshee. I told you the power figures of it. It's going to have, you know, pretty decent power. 456 horsepower standard at, on the base model and 590 on the, on the, uh, the other model. So, on the 440. So, let me know what you th think. I mean, I'm skeptical about electric cars. There's not enough charging infrastructure here in Detroit. And I kind of laugh that they're pushing this stuff. And... <laughs> Let's face it, GM and Ford have both said that electric vehicles aren't working. Ford can't get rid of their F-150 Lightnings. They can't get their dealers to even take any orders for the Mach-E right now, the Mustang Mach-E. Um, there's been problems with manufacturing and with uh, the Silverado EV. It's just been a mess. The, um, the the new Equinox EV, I think it was, yeah, it was the Equinox, e Equinox or Blazer. They've had, they've had a bunch of issues with them on, on the press runs. These electric vehicles are just something else. I mean, I understand that these companies have, are spending all this money on development and it's uh, trying to do a huge changeover so quickly because of government, but with no infrastructure, high cost, inflation, all this stuff, I, I just don't see EVs working. I, I, I think they're, I think they're good for certain people, um, but it'll be very interesting to see how cars like the Charger Daytona help kind of transition people into the EV world. I personally don't think America will ever get rid of or be full electric. I, I don't see it. Um, there might be states that like California that go to all electric, but I, I doubt everybody will. There'll be too much backlash. P prices of these cars are going to be high. Um, I don't know. I, it's, I, I'm just as skeptical as the next person. So I'm curious to know what you guys think. What do you think of this car? Does How do you think it looks? Would you rather have a two-door charger or a four-door charger? Let me know in the comments. I, I, I read them all the time. So let me re read what you guys think. Um, and I'm curious to know, I, I'm just as, just like one of you guys. So take and drop me a line down below and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.